so my plan if I'm able to take care of it is I need to freshen up the water in this. I did put fresh water in it early this morning but I can see the birds have already availed themselves of a bath. I just need to clean it up. I did discover that I have another Tigridia bloom or Mexican shellflower that will pop in the next day or two, maybe today. I'm very happy about that. But as you can see, there are some wild and woolly looking branches coming off of that winged euonymus that I need to kind of rein back in. And I'm going to allow this uh, viburnum to uh, continue growing. It is doing fine. I have it lifted. I'll try to show you under here so that it's not lying on the ground. I'm noticing that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And here's another winged euonymus, just going insane. So I need to get out here and get these under control. I can't even see the fatsia back there. I'm going to try to get my self, my shadow out. But just look at that. Aren't they? Oh, they're just so pretty. And then I have finally some buds appearing on the Duchess of Edinburgh. Oop, my sunglasses are falling off. Oh, that's a leaf. That's not a bud. I thought I saw some buds out here the other day. Um, and it's possible that they were there and then they've been snitched off by certain critters, plant predator. Oh. Well, shoot, my sunglasses are not cooperating. What's happening? Hmm? You want to watch them? Also needs a haircut. The daisies are just beautiful. I keep thinking I'll cut some and bring them in. I did once. But I love them outside as well. I put the bacopa down here. That's that white flower in that pot right there. Um, it was the sun shifted, so it's getting too much sun. Um, it's recovered a little bit. It is with a fuchsia, which also prefers shade. So they're just kind of hanging out in the yard in a pot which is fine. And of course there's Big Daddy himself. Okay, I'm going to walk back. So I'm going to take a look at that.
Tigridia bloom and I love the uh, the Gara. I will say that Gara really responds well to a regular consistent fertilizing. You will get so many blooms if you do that. And there's the bud. <laughs> my sunglasses in my mouth again. So this is it right here. It's just kind of a mishmash in here in this pot. And I don't know. I was thinking I would take them out at one point, And then I decided it would just be best to leave them. So once everything has bloomed out, I'll remove the contents and put those bulbs in the landscape. Um, and then there is a delphinium right here that has, uh, I think it's completed its bloom cycle. I'll go ahead and put it in the landscape. This is the uh, the pansies that I trimmed up in our last tour. They're looking really good. And I'm just in love with the ponytail grass. Absolutely love it as well as the fescue. And again, they both really respond to a consistent fertilizing schedule. And there's limelight, which I'm kind of questioning whether this is a limelight. Um, I might have to do a little bit more research. The only reason I'm thinking maybe not is because of its height. I mean, it's way, way over my head. So it may be a different variety that shares some similarities to limelight. I'll have to figure that one out. And the cosmos. There are some buds forming way down in there. I think you can see right there and here's one so this will be full of blooms I mean it's just absolutely covered it'll be full as soon as it starts to bloom and then there's that perennial mum that's already got a couple flowers this delphinium has decided to flush out again so I'll have some nice tall spires I don't remember if I showed you, I can't even tell if that's on camera, the sun is right behind me, but there are some little tiny flowers forming. And the dahlias are being dahlias. The red one hasn't actually bloomed yet. This is it, and I think we have a, a bud right here, but I haven't seen any action yet. And then in the front, um, if I thought I had enough, enough battery power, I would go to the front to show the progress on the golden chain that I am working on. It uh, suffering from chlorosis that I am treating um, but I don't think I have enough battery to get that included in this um, but I did want I'm gonna add a few things I'm just gonna have to plug the camera in these were included in a seed bomb um, along with the red clover and a few of the other flowers right those little white flowers right there 
were all part of a seed bomb gift that I received from my oldest daughter on Mother's Day that I just loved. I had the best time planting, sharing, Okay, so I have returned to my sewing studio where I can plug my camera in. My, I think it died. But I, there's a couple things I wanted to talk about. Um, as you can see, I have quite the array here. One of the things that I wanted to talk about was bringing fresh flowers indoors, which I think is something we all should do. We grow them outside, we enjoy them outside, but we should also have that that flow in the house, in the rooms that we see all the time. Um, and that is a personal choice, I think. I mean, I've been in homes where there have been vast, beautiful bouquets in the bathroom, um, in the kitchen, of course, you know, in the entryway, the dining room. But I specifically remember, um, I have a family member uh, who shall remain nameless, but, um, her house did consist of a huge number of very, very large, beautiful, just paintable um, bouquets and vases just full of flowers in her powder room, I guess I should say. It wasn't really a bathroom, it was a powder room. But how fun is it to save jars? I've really gotten into this lately. I'm not saving plastic like I used to. Um, I'm hoping in all of my heart that they are being recycled. I feel like we are doing the proper thing in having them separated for recycling. But jars are a whole different story. Um, currently I have several reused glass jars in my refrigerator holding contents that they didn't originally hold. I also have a jar like this one in my pantry that I have put some elephant garlic in because I don't like to just have it scattered about, you know, on the shelf. So if I can keep it in a small jar, I can see it, I know what it is, and it's not, you know, kind of disappearing into the back of the cabinet. But they also are great for vases. They really, truly are. So, um... This is a pimento jar, and you know those little tiny flowers with little tiny um, stems fit beautifully in a jar like this, and then you can just set it on a desk or something. Now this is a, it's already got water in it because I can't pour water into this. I have to do that, uh, you know, in the sink. But um, I've had this for, I have three of these, so this is the one that I just happened to catch. And what I use that for, um, I've had it since before I had children, and I use that for little flowers like this cornflower or bachelor's button, and I just do that, and I have a little tiny vase with a little teeny tiny flower that will keep me happy. I am taking a chance, I realize. I think George understands. I've, I've got his back. But I'm still too nervous to do it, so I'm going to put little corn flour right there for now. Okay, so, but how, you know, they're, they're just jars. What? How do we make them look really pretty, and what kind of flowers should we put in there? Um, one thing to do, now this I just fell in love with, and this is a... Um, sticky um, it's been soaked in hot water um, and as you can see if you soak them in hot then the the paper generally will just kind of come off but there's always that residue which is now stuck to my fingers but um, oh that's just crazy okay that's the first time that's happened to me well, you saw it here first, folks. This is insane. It's like glue. 
Um, huh. Well, very strange. So don't do that, apparently. But um, this stuff I had never heard of before. And we bought the house and moved in about, well, almost a year and a half ago. It's been maybe 14, 15 months. Um, it was in the garage. So I thought, well, I mean, they're long gone, uh, the people that we bought it from. I don't think they're going to drive all the way from the state they moved to to come pick up this. And I'm not going to mail it because it's a chemical uh, that is flammable. And boy, I'm telling you what, it is very, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The smell will knock your head off. So don't do this in the house. Do If you're going to use this product, if it's even still available, like I said, I'd never heard of it. It works wonderfully. Um, it says on here that it will remove dried latex paint, glue, adhesives, sticker residue, pen, marker, lipstick, crayon, gum, candle wax. The only thing I've been using it on are my jars and to remove these labels. Um, I, do, I have been, until right now, um, trying to remove this uh, label business with uh, my hands which I was able to do before without having that weirdness happen um, and then whatever was left over um, I would take a single layer and it's gonna sound really strange but I would take a paper towel single layer and stick it onto the sticky part that was left and then pour a little bit of this onto it just goes exactly where the paper towel was stuck from the glue that I really couldn't see. So if you just take a paper towel and just do like this, just kind of whoosh it around, it'll stick to the remaining glue and then put whatever product you're going to use on top of that paper towel and let it just sit. And lo and behold, the whole thing just comes off with the other half of the paper towel. So that's been my method to date. This may be a completely different story because this isn't sticky where that label came off. It's only sticky on the label, just the label. Underneath it, the glass is fine. Well, there's a little bit right there. But I thought, what a unique looking little vase that would be. So what I do is I have my flowers, which will often have a shorter stem. Often, I don't want to cut um, one of these, this is a dahlia from a bulb, and I didn't want to cut off this so long that I ended up cutting all of the other completely unopened buds. So I'm just going to cut this. I want this in the house. I'll bring this in the house, and I'll put it in my little pimento jar. So I need to find that pair of scissors I had. Let me trim this guy down just a wee bit. Oh, here they are. And if you can cut at an angle, that's the best way to do it. So just at like, you know, point the flower toward you and then cut, poof, at an angle. And then your flower will be able to absorb a lot more water. I need to make that one a little, a little bit shorter. And you can also cut into the stem. So the more water it can absorb, the better. So there we have that. So I'll put just a wee bit of water in here. Okay. And then I also have a dahlia from a seed right here. I always take the leaves off because they can also um, basically cause a toxic water issue if you're facing flowers. Um, leaves will often have a bacteria or something on them that can you know cause problems with that with that water. Okay, so see, isn't that cute? That'd be cute, you know, on a fireplace mantle or something. Okay, and then I have 
I did get, go ahead and bring in a daisy. So I'm going to add my daisy to this little vase to kind of brighten that up just a wee bit. Maybe have them facing in opposite directions. Okay, and daisies typically have kind of a long vase life. Um, if you freshen up their water, it seems like I, I have vase. I have daisies in my kitchen that have been in there. Goodness me, I don't know. Over a week. I should probably go ahead and dispose of those. All right, I'll keep all these leaves and stems in one spot. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to decorate this little teeny jar right here. I'm going to take some of this lace, fold it in half like this. The reason I'm folding it in half and not using a smaller piece of lace is because I want the bow to be big, but this width is too wide for this area. So I'm going to fold it in half. Let me move you guys down just a wee bit. There we go. So fold this in half and then kind of, normally I wouldn't already have the flowers in there, but I did cut them while I was outside and I don't want them to sit without water too long. Okay and then tie a bow. Okay, that's just your average half knot right there. And now I can have a bow that's double the width of the lace wrapped around the mouth of the jar. And then if you're going for really a farmhouse look, you could add, you could tie in a black, little tiny skinny black ribbon with your white lace, which I think would be kind of cute, especially at a wedding. These would be so cute. And if you need these to stay, that's the other tip I was going to share with you. Alright, so I'm going to take these out for just a second. So if you need those to stay and you don't have a product, just take a piece of tape and go from one end of the jar to the other end of the jar, like that, and then take another piece of tape and crisscross. Like that. And then when you put these in, that tape kind of forces them to stay in the water instead of wanting to pop out. It's it acts like a, a nice little um, floral assist, I guess we'll call that. Okay. So there we have one little cute vase with just two flowers and it could actually hold two more if I had something small enough you know I'd, I'd put that in there right now but but I do not so we have this one and then this one I do this all the time for our Sunday dinners if I have a piece of fabric that's this big and I don't have plans for it do this. To me this is like the ultimate farmhouse look. Alright, so I kind of fold it over as many times as I can and then I take fabric scissors and I cut it yeah, about that wide. We'll see what that actually works out to be because that's generally what I do. So it's two inches, kind of what I thought. And then I open it up so I have a two inch ish strip of fabric and again I'm just going to kind of fold the middle part down and 
and then if you feel like it's not going to stay tied you can do a double half knot which will definitely help keep it you know sorted out okay and then either just tie a knot which again I almost always just tie a knot and this you definitely want to do this before you put flowers in because there's another step and it gets a little difficult to do without you know turning your turning your jar all which away okay now I'm going to cut a skinny just a small little ropey piece like this and poke it under. If you have to, you can take a safety pin, do like this, and then push the safety pin between the jar and the knot you tied. Pull it through and then undo your safety pin. Okay, and now I'm just going to tie a bow. I'm not going to worry about a half knot or anything just going to tie a bow however you want that to look and of course this is flannel fabric so it's quite a bit thicker than most of the cottons that I use um, but I actually kind of like the way that looks I'm going to trim this side down trim this one at an angle and then if you want to, you can clip to kind of fray that a little. Like that. Okay. And pour in your water. And then with a hydrangea, definitely pull these leaves off. If you want greenery in your arrangement, um, I recommend choosing greenery specifically so that you can um, have a stem and the, the leaves will be high up out of the water. You really don't want leaves in the water that the flowers are in. And then Here's number three, I think. I always do at least three in a bigger vase. I'm, I'm not um, thrilled with even numbers. Okay, so here is vase number two right here. And the great thing about a hydrangea is they've got these open spaces you can literally like make up a flower. You can have something like this. Pop these down in between like that. I think I would prefer to have this one on the other side though. So just kind of remember there's a rule of threes, a rule of fives. Um, oh get in the vase silly there we go have a little bit of height I think I do need to add some greenery to this one but I do like the way that looks I think it's pretty springy it would also be cute this little fabric with um, a winter themed flower arrangement maybe with a, a poinsettia and then just as a a final while you absorb that prettiness right there also if you have any questions um, you know don't hesitate to drop me a comment below um, if I'm not able to answer it I know Caroline uh, will be happy to so um, now that I've said that we're going to talk about just a few little helpful tips. 
I think I mentioned earlier today, I am dealing with um, chlorosis in the golden chain, and I am using iron to help that situation. Um, when you have a plant that has very pale green yellow leaves, but the interior veins are dark green. That is absolutely a sign of an iron deficiency, which is what chlorosis is. And um, there are products that you can get. There is a liquid iron, and then there are other pelleted irons that you can amend with. Um, it is a very good idea if you decide to go ahead and try to help the plant um, rather than take it out um, that you watch it every day while you're treating it for an iron deficiency. So, um, and read the directions. There's, I have a liquid that is um, clearly says a uh, foliate application um, is, and that's the leaves, foliage, that is um, really, really good for the plant. However, you don't want to do that during the heat of the day. Um, if you do take care of that in, in the morning, um, make sure you water well before the heat of the day has set in. Um, and the plant can utilize all that water uh, before it evaporates. You know, if you put, if you water your plant and it's hot outside um, and it's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it's really not going to have an opportunity before a great deal of evaporation occurs. Um, so if you have a sick plant like I do, just kind of keep an eye on it, check on it, um, make sure that you've got eyes on it while it's going through the, you know, the getting well process. Um, I check on that plant on average once a day, but a couple times I've gone out twice a day to look and make sure that I'm seeing some improvement. And that's another thing. If you don't see immediate improvement, don't give up. You know, if you have made the decision, I'm going to try to save this plant from this crazy iron deficiency, then go ahead and keep trying. You know, give it, give it a couple of months. Don't say, okay, two weeks and you're out of here. Um, you might be very surprised at, you know, like one day it'll just look like it's on death's door, and the next day you go out and tra-la, it's made a full recovery. So um, that is my recommendation uh, for any type of um, chlorosis, iron deficiency, um, any anything like that that you need to take care of. And then, of course, you need to try to figure out why that happened. Is it the soil? Um, did it come from the nursery or, or wherever you got the plant? Did it come that way? And then all of a sudden the symptoms were obvious. Um, you know, just kind of keep an eye on those kinds of, of things. Um, my chair is so loud. Gosh. Um, so, and that brings me to how, what, how do I water? When do I water? Um, the thing to do is once you put a plant in the ground, here's a, a really good general rule of thumb is to the, so you've put a, a plant in your landscape and you don't know how it's going to do. So that first week, just block off on your calendar. I am going to water it every day. I'm going to check the soil for dryness. And if I don't feel wet soil two inches down, then I'm going to water my plant. Then every other day on week two. So it's been in the ground for two weeks now. So every other day. Give it that to uh, soil test. If it's dry, give it a drink of water. And then every third day, the third week, and that's for new plants like annuals, vegetables, um, perennials, anything, especially anything that is in a container. Container plants require way more water. The water drains out. They don't have as much soil. Um, to help retain more water, um, that it just dries out so much faster. So make sure that you're watering a container plant probably at least every other day in the summer.
but if you've put it in the ground, it's in your landscape, it, the good general rule of thumb is what I, what I basically just said. First week, every day. Second week, every other day. Third week, every third day. Um, anything that's starting to look kind of tired, you know, if, it, if it's a spire plant like a salvia or a foxglove or, you know, something that's tall, delphinium, if it just kind of starts to lay on the ground, go ahead and cut the flowers off. Just cut the blooms off. If you're not bringing them in the house and they're spending their time outside, then cut those blooms off and you might get a second flush you would be surprised. One of the things about cutting your flowers is often they will provide you with that late summer second flush of flowers. Um, some things you don't want to cut your bulbs. If, if the flower itself has, has moved on, it's past its time and it's, it's gone, then don't cut those bulb leaves until they begin to turn brown. And even then if you can just kind of lay them down and cover them up with mulch, that's the best. Uh, the bulb is kind of pulling the nutrients back from those leaves. And if you cut them, then the bulb is going to be deficit in almost everything it needs to provide you with blooms the following year. Okay, so roses. So here we are now. We've, we've had our first flush of flowers off the rose bushes. Um, once they've bloomed, go out and check them. If you see any dead canes, if you see anything that looks it like it's maybe got some kind of a black spot or if it's diseasey looking, go ahead and cut those those canes off. Go ahead and cut those leaves. Um, go ahead and deadhead if you want to. A lot of roses do a lot better if they're deadheaded. Um, most of the roses in landscape are a reblooming rose. There are some um, that have may have been in your landscape for a long time and they possibly would not be reblooming. But you can find out um, if you know the name of your rose, just Google it. Um, is a you know John F. Kennedy blue uh, white rose a reblooming rose? If you have any idea what the name of the rose is. Um, that's why it's always a good idea to leave that metal tag. When you buy a rose, often you'll find a little round metal tag attached. If you just leave that on there, then you'll know what it is. Um, but you, you do deadhead reblooming roses in the summer, um, kind of as they start to fade out. Um, but that's one reason why I love bringing them in the house, because they can just fade out in a vase just as easily as they can fade out on the bush. So it's always a good idea to go out and check them anyway. But um, the, And then as far as roses go, I th almost everybody knows that you want to cut about a quarter of an inch right above that first five leaf junction. And you want to cut that at an angle. So a five leaf junction is, um, I'll draw a picture. Is where you wanna cut. And you cut your roses and you realize, oh, I just cut a whole bunch of roses and I didn't think about the, the five leaf thing. It's fine. You're gonna have kind of a weird, you know, growth pattern the next time, but that's easily fixed. So don't worry about that. Um, now, as far as bugs go, um, we're going to talk about some of those next time. But I do want to suggest a couple things. Um, I it'd be it'd be weird if someone was unaware that ladybugs eat aphids, but it's not outside the realm of possibility that someone doesn't know that ladybugs take care of your aphids. The fact that you can buy a pack of ladybugs at Home Depot and Lowe's, non-sponsored, no affiliation, that's just where I've seen them. Um, I think you can even get them at local stores like Fred Meyer might have some. But it's something to think about, you know, don't, um, 
If you see ladybugs, I would just suggest that we leave them be. They're doing a very good job. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. I wish I could give each one of you a vase of flowers. I did also want to mention that if you wanted to give someone flowers, saving jars is great for that purpose. Um, if you like that farmhouse look, you could paint something really sweet with black paint on your jar or paint like a white you know, a white circle and then paint black words or vice versa. Um, you know, or you could put stickers on there, uh, just however you want to do it. It would brighten someone's day um, and you're not out of vase. It's, it's a jar. Um, I love the idea of saving jars. I, they, they work beautifully for so, so many different things. Um, and I hope you will give that a try as well. So thank you for joining me. Please, if you have any questions, just down below, um, please like and subscribe. As I said yesterday in my video, I'm so excited that I have 71 subscribers. It's just lifting me up. So have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs>